Red Dead Redemption 2. It is one of the biggest games out there. In fact, it is the 10th best selling game of all time. If we take a look at the reviews, we can see that people definitely like this game. But it is not at a masterpiece level. I'll say that it had all the potential of not only being one of the biggest games, but also one of the best games, period. Though, it is fair to assume that this potential was not utilized, and sadly, there are just too many issues with the game. In this video, I want to look at some of these minor and major problems and try to understand why Red Dead Redemption 2 is a very good game, but not a great game. Before ranting about the bad, I wanted to take a moment to appreciate the good of Red Dead. The first, main and most obvious positive point I will bring up is of course the story. There can be bumps on the way, but when you finally finish the game and look at the completed storyline, it can just go past you. Arta is one of the best protagonists in gaming history, and his life journey with the Wanderling game is truly unique. This story will touch you to the core. You will be invested, and you will care about these characters and their destinies. If you did not play the game yet, I hugely recommend giving it a shot at least just for the story. Another awesome thing that truly works in this game is its presentation. Simply put, it looks and sounds excellent. And this goes for more than just action. The world, scenery, the nature, everything conveys the feel of those times like nothing else does. It is a four year old game and cinematically, it is still one of the best. People that worked on this really did an outstanding job. And I don't think that there are many games that can rival Red Dead in this regard. One more thing that I would like to point out is immersion. Sometimes the whole Red Dead Redemption world just works. In addition to looking great and sounding great, the game is full of small details that help you to really immerse yourself in the life of Arthur Morgan. I am talking about such simple things as the fact that at any moment of the open world you can make a fire in the wilderness and camp near it, cook food, drink coffee, craft ammo and clean your weapons. In towns and cities you play poker, take baths, listen to music, visit shops and so much more. Just being in this world feels believable, and the strangest mechanic makes it even better, as at any moment you can find something unusual happening and participate in it. Hey, this here is a private financial matter, so why don't you keep right along? Not looking to interfere with any sensitive financial matters, I'll leave you to it. Now for the bad. After all, the main goal of this video is to look at the flaws and try to learn from them. I will leave the worst for later and start with something that definitely could be better, but does not overall destroy your enjoyment of the game. 
The main point that I want to talk about here is action, gunfight and gunplay in particular. The issue here is how uninventive and outdated this part of the game is. It is okay, shooting is totally interesting at first, but after some time it gets staler and staler. The further you go in the game, less inventive it gets. It just throws more and more enemies at you, and that is basically it. There are many other ways of beating enemies that you can utilize in a fight, but most of them are kind of useless. Why would you try to throw dynamite, lasso someone, go in melee, or use throwables, if you can just easily shoot them in the head, especially with the inclusion of a dead eye ability? It makes most of the gunfights laughingly trivial. Usually, developers try to implement some mechanics that should make gameplay more interesting and unique. This can be stuff like different kinds of enemies, for example. Games can have big enemies, snipers, shielded guys, and so on. This is a simple way to add a more interesting gameplay look, as different types of enemies would have different strengths and weaknesses. One type of enemy can be weak to a particular gun, while another enemy can have a weak point that you should aim at. This gives an incentive for a player to use different gameplay mechanics that they would not use otherwise. Red Dead Redemption, on the other hand, has nothing even remotely like this. All enemies are just simple goons that shoot regular guns at you and die from one good shot. Another example of a more inventive game design would be a game trying to limit players in some way, so that we would be forced to play around those limitations. In Nintendo's Breath of the Wild you can simply find the best weapon and stomp through the game with it. All weapons break, and ammo is scarce. This is a limitation that drives players to try new and exciting ways of dealing with enemies that they would not try otherwise. In Red Dead you can and will get a good weapon that you will use to kill everybody. And the ammo is never a problem either, you are just never limited by anything. And thus there is no incentive to experiment or try new things, even though there are things to experiment with. One more issue with the gunfights is how immersion breaking they are. Earlier I said that the game's immersion is one of its best parts, and it is true, except that gunfights ruin this immersion completely. One moment you're wandering in the woods, under the rain, hunting, immersing yourself in this world. Moments later you kill a town's worth of people in two minutes on your own or with a companion. Nor Arthur, nor anyone else are not established as some kind of super people that should be able to do that. In fact, it is the opposite, they are supposed to feel like regular, real people that we players should be able to relate to. When a single man kills 30 people in a few minutes and goes about his day, this does not make him too relatable. The problem is not only that killing is easy, but it is also that dying is hard. Enemies simply are not dangerous. You can absorb bullets like a sponge. While being shot, pop a few magic tonics and a couple cans of baked beans, you're full HP now, and can kill everyone easily. None of this feels immersive at all and instead breaks this realistic dynamic that the game has otherwise. It just feels lazy and outdated, like they just ported the shooting from GTA 5 and did not think about it much. Overall, Rockstar handles shooting like this for basically 20 years now, and nothing is changing. But again, the action is not particularly bad, it just could be so much more involving and dynamic rather than being the mindless shooting gallery it is. Here we are at the problem that never left my mind throughout my whole playthrough. The thing that brought me to making this video. Let's talk about the pacing of Red Dead Redemption 2. Simply put, the game is very and very slow, and the player has absolutely no control over any of this. This is a complex issue, so we will look at this piece by piece. Starting with the pacing of the story itself. It was not in vain when I said that it is when you have already finished the game and look at the completed story 
that it reveals itself to the maximum and will touch you. Through the course of the plot itself, everything is not that smooth, thanks to the pacing. There are 6 chapters in a game and an epilogue. The problem seems obvious if we look at them in more detail. The very first chapter is a 2 hour tutorial. You get to know the game, how it works and handles. Also we meet the characters for the first time, including Arthur. Then chapter 2 is basically an intro to the game. Nothing major is happening here. No important plot points, no plot twists. You just kind of hang out with the game. Nothing is driving you to do anything. There is no danger, there is no urgency and there are no stakes. Imagine if the game did establish something like if you don't get enough money in time, then someone will die. Or that you need to kill someone that puts your game in danger. No, you as a player are just thrown into Arthur's life and there are 25 characters in the game that you just met and know nothing about, including Arthur himself. The only major goal you have at this point of the game is to get money. But it is so arbitrary that it is basically non-existent, as this money never goes to anything and is never needed to progress the plot. You don't need some specific amount of money to save your game, bail someone out or buy some important equipment. No, you just need money for the sake of it, because Dutch said that you need money. And when you get it, it goes nowhere. This continues throughout the whole of chapter 2 and even into chapter 3 there are just some minor issues on your way and the stakes are basically never raised. Only at the end of chapter 3 does this start changing. There are finally stakes, the gang is in danger and you are involved in this. Your actions begin to be meaningful to the plot. When do you think this happens? Around 5, maybe 10 hours into the game? <laughs> For me it was around 40 hours of gameplay to reach this point. Close to the halfway point of the whole story. And it is not even the main plot twist as it happens 30 more hours into the game. So for the first 40 hours I was just getting introduced to the game. And only after that did something interesting started happening. And that's only the start of the plot, the main plot take off with the raised stakes and real danger being closer to the end of the game. And don't get me wrong, having an intro in your story to introduce the world, its main plot points and major characters can be a great thing if done properly. But this kind of intro should not last for almost half of your story. You should not wait for 40 hours to finally have a reason to do missions and be hooked on the plot. Just imagine if in Lord of the Rings we spent the whole first movie just meeting characters and learning about the world and riding around Shire. And only in the second movie does Frodo get the ring and the plot starts to take off. It could be kind of cute, but overall probably quite boring and bizarre. What makes this problem even worse is riding. Riding horses in Red Dead Redemption 2 is kind of similar to gunfights. It is just there. It does not make you feel bad, but it does not make you feel good either. The problem is not the riding itself, but the fact that riding a horse is around half of the gameplay. To show and not tell, let's look at examples. Here is me in the middle of the forest after doing some secondary stuff, camping. I have decided to go for the current mission. It is pretty far away, so it would be nice to use a train instead of manually riding there. Headed out to the train station. Turns out it is closed at the current state of the game. Ok, no problem, stagecoach it is. After arriving in the city, I need to travel more to reach the camp. The horse gets spooked on the way by some alligator, which does not help. After that, it is riding, riding, riding. Finally, I am at the camp and it took me 8 minutes of traveling on one of the fastest horses to get here. For 8 straight minutes, I did nothing except travel to the mission. This is one of the worst cases that I had. But this kind of thing happens all the time. Through the course of the game, you will waste 
hours just getting to your destinations. Worse still, getting to the mission does not mean that you have arrived and the story will progress. Nope, most of the missions include more riding. Of course, this mission that I was traveling to starts with a cinematic riding shot. Then you manually ride for almost 2 minutes and then it transitions into another riding shot. Add up to 3 more minutes of riding. Sometimes you will also need to ride back at the end of the mission. In this example that I showed, the whole mission took me 30 minutes, out of which 14 minutes was riding a horse. How about another mission, where you need to ride with the boys for 6 minutes straight? Basically, each and every mission starts with you and your companions riding out somewhere. And before that, you needed to travel to the start of the mission itself. I am so disappointed because it could easily be so much better. Even if it were implemented the same way it is implemented in another Rockstar game, GTA 5. There you also need to ride a lot, basically in every mission. But you almost never need to wait for your companions. You are not limited to the speed of the traffic, to the red lights or anything else. If you want, you can just race to the destination as fast as possible and the mission will progress. Besides, racing a car through the city is just much more fun than riding a horse. And understand that GTA Way is not a solution to this problem. But it is just so much better to at least give your players an option to play however they want instead of how you want them to play. For some reason, this is something that you can't do in Red Dead. You are forced to ride at the same speed as your companions, which is always a lot slower than your max speed. This way, you really spend half of the gameplay riding either to your destination or inside the mission itself. At times it was just so very tiring. And yes, you get to hear the dialogue and know the characters better, learn about their past and relationships. But this does not always work, sometimes the dialogue is not interesting or just gives you nothing. At times you don't care about this particular dialogue or maybe even about this particular character. Besides, it is just a bad way of expanding your world through speaking a lot. And the replayability of this is very questionable. Anyhow, you are forced to sit through each and every ride in the game and listen no matter what. I am so torn because the game has so many great qualities, like the story, but all these issues with the pacing, riding, action and many other problems that I did not mention in the video, just do not let me say that Red Dead Redemption 2 is a great game. The main problem I have is that you as a player have absolutely no way to control any of this. There is no skip ride button, you can't run to the mission in front of the companions and there is no difficulty setting to make the action more challenging. Instead, Rockstar fully controls you and how you play their game. In the end, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a good game that I thoroughly enjoy and will remember but it could have been so much more if not for the outdated Rockstar game design. Must hurt like crazy. Just my luck. God damn it.